My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Transport Fever 2 and the Canadian based map. Now there's been a few changes in between the previous episode and this one and we'll start off just by going over some of the main changes that have occurred off camera. Now we're starting on the hills outside of Calgary and Chestermere and as we can see Calgary has developed into a rather large metropolis of a city which is pleasing to see. It's all almost merged in across the board now which is very very nice. But let's take a look at the changes. One of the first changes to occur is the airport in Calgary has now been upgraded to a large airport. This is because we've unlocked the larger aircraft now and it makes sense to be able to utilise them. And it does also make sense that Calgary would have a large capacity airport and a large runway size. So there's Calgary's shiny new upgraded airport built on the grounds of the old one. The freeway, highway, motorway, Trans Canada Road, whatever you want to call it, that has been completed to an extent. What I've done with it is I've run it up towards Cochrane here as we can see and from this point onwards we're just going to use the standard country roads through the Rocky Mountains that we can see just winding their way off towards Canmore in the mouth of the Rocky Mountains. I made that decision just because to me having dual three lane roads side by side would not be very efficient in terms of usage of space so just having a standard high capacity country road made the most sense to me so there's where the, the the motorway terminates so as it stands it is just serving alberta primarily focused obviously around the the capital city of calgary now i've also gone through and upgraded quite a few of the roads in calgary to the higher capacity ones and what i've also done is this here where we had the level crossing which caused a bottleneck on this bridge I've now rerouted the train lines to run underneath the road bridge so now there's no interaction between our trains and our road vehicles which should keep things flowing just a little bit more smoothly and it should help with some of the traffic issues that we have between Calgary and Northwest Calgary. Now another thing that was requested was a look at the city information screen so if we go ahead and open that up now Here's our town statistics. We'll just expand this just a little and we'll order this by size. So as we can see, three of our four larger cities are Calgary or suburbs thereof with around about 2,000 residents each. Now hitting these full cargo requirements is going to be difficult just because of the size of the cities. So that's why they're a bit, a bit low. In the meantime, as we can see, we've unlocked a few new diesel engines and a new tram. So we'll swap the tram out first of all. But yes, here's our city overview screen. Obviously, the emission levels are very poor for most of our cities because of the amount of traffic. However, the station capacity is doing pretty well. Okotoks here is only mediocre. Black Diamond is poor. And there's a few other poor ones in the smaller towns around the map. That probably needs some attention in the near future. And it was just so also some of the traffic levels are quite poor. But in some respects that does become quite unavoidable when you get very large cities so close to each other as we have in this area here. In fact, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch now to say that Chestermere has formed part of North East Calgary there pretty much bordering each other very nicely now obviously separated by the freight line that we have here that is servicing our oil industry okay so moving on we had the tram unlock just there so what we'll do we'll swap those out first of all and we'll do this via the vehicle manager screen and we'll just go to tram only obviously that is going to include all trams that we have on the map as we can see so we'll select all, which is 92 vehicles in total, and then we'll just do a bulk replace of all our trams. At the moment, we are running the PCC 1643 Pittsburgh. The newest one we've unlocked is the Toronto PCC A7. However, as we can see, it does have a reduced capacity, 
only 18 versus 21 but it does have a couple extra miles per hour speed and it's also got a little bit more power and tractive effort so if it's going up and down steep inclines and hills it should be able to handle those a lot better and it's also going to be that little bit quicker off of the mark as well so we'll sacrifice the capacity because i don't think many of our trams are running to bursting point anyway so we could probably absorb that and that's going to cost us 23 and a half million so that's all the trams now replaced and i think what we will do is we'll pick one i see one just there and we'll hop on board and have a nice look at our tram so this is the toronto tram you have to excuse the flickering lights and the the line name on the information board there if we just sit here that hides it quite nicely and this also gives us a pretty nice view in downtown calgary to see what it looks like from a uh, one of our citizens points of view and i think it starting to look very well developed got quite a nice skyline with some quite tall high rises and we've still got that element of scenery and countryside off on the outskirts there as you can see with the residential area winding its way up the side of the hill so with that taken care of what i'd like to do today is actually hop back over the the, uh, the rocky mountains into british columbia and if you recall a few episodes ago before I got sidetracked with Calgary and the, the freeway construction, we had started work on a freight yard just here outside Shelter and Galena Bay. As it stands at the moment, we have... Let's just filter the line view there. We have food and machinery being delivered into this freight hub, which is then being delivered onwards into Shelter and Galena Bay. Now what we could also do is run a line from the freight hub down into the cusp just here which also requires food and machinery and this would help the cusp to start to grow a little bit more i mean it is nice to have these small provincial towns on the map you don't want every city to be a huge metropolis but given the easy access all we'd have to do is take a line off here and bring it down into this station and we can add a cargo platform on this station so we'll do that now let's go to configure just here i am aware this station is overcrowded as we can see all that does need addressing at some point i'm not ignoring it and what we'll do is we'll run another line down here and we will put down a cargo platform We'll only have the one platform here. In fact, no, we could have two because we could have one over on the opposite side just there. So one would be serving the food deliveries and the other would be serving the machinery deliveries. So with that done, oh, we forgot one thing. We forgot a cargo building, didn't we? Let's go ahead and put one of those down. Okay, that's just causing a collision just there. However, we can have it over here out of the way. It looks a little bit odd, but it does have an active connection, which is the main thing. So that's the that. Now what we want to do is run out the train line over the river and across into this junction over here. Now I think what we've got, the setup we've got at the moment, is we have three lines heading in, as we can see and one heading out. So we're going to need to come off the outside lane or the outside track and then either tunnel under or bridge over the remaining track so there's no cross contamination, so to speak, between the lines and then just take it over the river and into our new cargo station. Another option, and this might be quite a, mm, in fact, it might not be just because of how far Shelter Bray shelter bay has encroached on the station but what i was going to suggest is if we come off this way and curl back around on ourselves we could have it run this way in and out that would work as well but given that shelter bay is expanded up towards the station it does limit our space there so i think we'll go for the dirty option if you will and just have it branch off this way and then bridge over the top as we said 
and then over the river as well so let's take this line off immediately and start climbing as much as we can we want to get the elevation to encourage a bridge to be constructed although at the, oh that's close that's not too far off just being careful here because we're gonna have to have quite a tight radius to get over this and it's still oh it's not quite there although again it can't be too far off at this point surely how are we doing in terms of our angle not great but in fact now that would work because then what we can do is we can run down parallel with this track and then have our freight line hug alongside the passenger line so yes i think that's going to be the most viable option here so from this point as i said we'll come you can now start following the train once more in fact we'll come down over this way and hopefully we're going to have enough room here to actually drop down to the same level we are quite elevated so could we start heading down without clashing with the tunnel there yes we can have we left ourselves enough room that remains to be seen just about although it is quite steep but we do have fairly powerful trains now which can handle that gradient so that's of no concern okay i've just realized i've come out on the wrong side there so let's just remove some of that all the way down here because we need to be on the left hand side of these tracks as we're looking at it from above otherwise we're gonna have to cross over the passenger line which i'd rather avoid if possible and again we'll have it stay at least flat because we don't want to be too too elevated when it comes to our bridge so this is going to be a rather expansive bridge with the looks of it let's try it from this direction let's get the line over the river from here and then bring this one in and do the same here just realized we kept a stone bridge there so let's just rebuild that bridge there's no point limiting it to what is it 56 miles per hour when our trains are capable of so much more these days even the freight trains let's give them every possibility there we go 112 is a lot better and through into there we're going to need a diamond which we're going to have to install on the bridge which hopefully won't be too problematic if we go for 50 miles per hour that should be more than adequate and indeed we can do it without causing too many issues or glitches which is great so from here we need to get up to this line here is it at all possible let's have a look it's going to be difficult oh it's not a million miles away and in fact if we just have that oh no can't have it doing that hmm okay well what we can do with this line here is the one that is returning back to the station so this can just hook into any of these lines here and if we get it in before the junction if possible let's just get rid of all of this we'll redo this a little bit later so there's the junction onto all three of the inbound tracks so if we can break off here and let's keep it level I think we should be able to do this quite comfortably just delete some of that just there and bring that back there we go that will work so that's the return line from the station to pick up the next load of goods this is the outbound lane that is going to be dropping the goods off oh how does that look oh that's that's not a million miles away 
I think I would accept that. Yes. And then that. In fact, no, we need to delete all of this because I think we're far too high up here. So let's just approach this from the opposite direction and see what we can do to tackle this rather awkward bit of terrain that we're dealing with. In fact, yes, let's swap the tunnel for a nice modern tunnel. Now, where do we want? We want to be there. A new vehicle, the New Haven EP587 miles per hour electric locomotive. We can take a look at that in a few moments once we get this track laid in. It's not far off. It's just the this bit here which is causing the issues. Now, what we could do, hopefully this will work, is if we just take the brush size down, the strength up, a bit more than that though, and just flatten this hill off. Let's go a bit higher. That then might encourage a complete bridge. Let's try that again now and see if that does indeed work as intended. Where's our line? There it is. So we've still got the collision, okay. Well, let's try this. Let's try it a different way then. Let's bridge over. There we go. Just shorten it as much as we can. We want the iron bridge. Does that have clearance over the catenary? Just about. And if we aim there, and again, shorten it as much as possible. And then what we want to do is curve this around. And where's the track? Yes, we can connect in without the too much slope issue. And then this should be a nice straightforward cut. It's too much curvature. But what we can do for that is simply... In fact, let's take that back a little bit further. Because the snake bend there was a little bit unnecessary, I think. Let's now bring this in. Have I, am I connecting to the end? Yes, I am. Change that for a nice modern tunnel. There we go. So that's going to work. It looks a bit odd. But it's going to keep everything separate. And then what we want to do is put some signals down nice and quickly. So this one was our return train. Or our return line which is heading over to the freight yard at the cusp. So these are heading not that way. That's going to cause all sorts of issues if we try and get away with that. But we're coming down this way. And then running parallel over the bridge to the diamond just there. And then we want the return signals. Don't need too much blocking, but enough that we can space our trains out nicely. And then hopefully what we can do with this bridge foot here is if we run a small line of parallel track just there and then delete it. There we go. That moves the uh, the feet of the bridge away from the line. We're clear of the catenary there. And I believe we... Ooh, it clips on the book. I suppose we can make believe that the attachments for the catenary are actually on the underside of the bridge. So there we go. Now we can actually set up the onward deliveries for the cusp, which is the bread and the machinery. So for that, we're going to need a truck station. So we'll find that in this tab. Let's have a look here. Oh, a cargo station for a small city. I believe this only has one platform. Well, we could always just have two of these. We could have one set there and another set back here. Like that. And that adds a bit of variety to our cargo stations, as we can see. I think they look quite nice. Obviously, these are part of a mod. And then what we're going to need are the drop-off points for inside the city itself. So let's have a look. Our machinery tends to be concentrated up here. So that can be dropped off there. And then the bread can be dropped off down there. 
that will work for me not the most efficient of the lines but never mind so this one can be for the machinery it's got the similar sort of color to the machinery all already but we will just change that to a proper gray sort of color there there we go so that's our machinery delivery for Nacusp. Let's just filter this now so it loads correctly. 30 seconds and fully loaded if possible. Only loading machines, heading to Laurel Street to unload, that's great. And then we want another new line from this station down to here. This was our bread. And again, we want to be fully loaded with a 30 second maximum wait time. Loading just the bread. And this is our food delivery for a cusp. Do we have a road vehicle depot in this part of the world? We do indeed. So we can purchase the road, ve uh, road vehicles now. We'll go for the Studebakers, they're the most modern ones that we have available. And for both of them, we can actually use the side stake truck as we can see here and here. And I think for these, I think six is going to be enough for each. So that's six a piece, which is 12 total. So our first six will go to our machinery line. Like so. And then our remaining six will go onto the food delivery line. All that we need to do now is set up the trains hauling the food and the machinery down here. So let's do that now. So we want new line. We're going from the Bay Cargo Exchange into Nacusp. Make sure we are clicking the cargo icon, obviously, which we are, which is good. Uh, fully loaded, if possible trains we set to 60 seconds and in fact given that the machinery and the food are both delivered in box cars we can do this with one train so we want you to load machinery and bread 50 percent each and that should give us a full load in total when you get there you're not loading anything at all color there's not going to be one what's halfway between gray and orange so we'll just go for something completely random and we'll go for a purple color and this will be our cargo delivery cargo freight i should say and this is the bay to nacusp excellent now we can purchase the locomotive for this line which yard are we using out here? I believe we're using this one. I think this does have access. No, no, it does not. So it's not that yard. Do we not have a yard for... Our, well, we must do because we've got cargo trains on the line. Right, let me just try and hunt down the the yard for this or we can just in fact i will just build one especially and we'll have it situated out here so we want buildings we want train depot and we want you right about there high speed not that it really matters they're not going to get up to speed on their way out here and we want one line heading in that way with a protecting signal there. And then we want a line heading out that way with a protecting signal just there. We've got the weird overlap there, but we'll ignore that. And now we can purchase the train. So we'll take this time now just to take a look at the new engines that we've unlocked the gmd gp9 toronto hamilton and buffalo 65 miles per hour decent power and the new haven a lot of power how much does this one cost to run per year that's very cheap 600 well 700 000 
That's uh, just under two million. I think we'll go for the the diesels. And what we'll do, we'll have that. And then we want wagons, cargo, boxcar, machinery and food. And if we go for 10, no, we'll go for 12. That would be six food, six machinery. In terms of its power and its speed, well, what we could do for this, if we wanted to be a little bit flash and fancy, is we could have a reversed engine on the end, like that. That gives us pretty decent speed and acceleration. 24 miles, miles, 24 million pounds. We'll just stick with one for now. We can always add an extra one later on. And this is going to be, can't see the line from there, so let's just shoot over here just a touch. And that's the good, where is it? Why can't I see the line? Cargo freight, that's the one. I'd forgotten what I named it. So let's have a look at this locomotive as it leaves the depot. It is a new one, so it's always nice to have a look at them as they come out. Very similar to the ones we have anyway. It must be just be a, a higher, a higher power model locomotive. And away she goes, looking very nice indeed. Hopefully now we will start seeing some cargo generated on the terminal for the cargo freight line, which is platform number three, as we can see here. There is nothing as of yet. Now I'm thinking it might be an idea to have extra trains now supplying the food freight and the, uh, the machinery. So at the minute we have two. I think what we'll do, although they're not running at full capacity as we can see there, let's just head back to our food production plant. Okay, so the issue for you is the the wheat. Do we only have one? No, we have two trains that supply the wheat. Okay. You should start loading, in fact, you're loading now. And you should get enough for a full load there quite comfortably. Yes, quite comfortably indeed. Okay, it's probably going to take a few moments for it all to kick in downstream. And then hopefully we'll start to see increased production now that we have an extra consumer for this factory, the town of Nakus. One other thing we just unlocked there during that build was a new electric locomotive. And I think what we'll do is we'll see how these would perform on our Rocky Mountain Railway. 209 years since we put our initial trains on here. That's mad. Anyway, let's amend all vehicles. So at the moment, what are these that we're using? The PRR Class GG1. Let's do a comparison here and see how these would perform with the New Haven EP5. So slightly less power and also less speed. In that case then let's disregard that and we'll keep those with the PRR class GG1 was it I believe. And instead we'll hop out towards our, in fact we'll go for the Alberta line which is this line here which at present is running the Pioneer Zephyr. And let's see how we could rebuild this using the New Haven EP5. We want passenger wagons. Although it's quite, yeah, it's limited on its speed. Perhaps this would be better for freight. Well, let's see if we can give this train a new lease of life anyway. Let's go for electric. 99 miles per hour is our fastest electric. In terms of diesel, we have the Alco PA. And what we could do is if we go to multi-unit, we have this one here, which generates extra power because of the second engine unit there. Or whatever it's called. I'm not sure what the correct name for this uh, unit here is. 
And if we go for the All America Golden Sand, at the moment we have a capacity of 52. So if we aim for something, we could even upgrade it. 112 miles per hour in three minutes. Well, there you go. We've essentially doubled the acceleration and the speed there, haven't we? I think we'll do that. We'll swap out these trains now and we'll retire the Zephyrs on this line and we'll go for the Alco PAPB with the All American Golden Sand. So that's one, two, three, four carriages per train, per loco. And then we'll go through at the end and add on the, the multi unit as well. Okay, it's decided to do it that way around. One thing I would like to see included in the game is a way to send to the front rather than having to click through all of your carriages manually like this. If you could perhaps shift click and it went to the front or to the rear, that would be really useful. There we go. I think that's all of them set up. No, that one won't be going anywhere. Let's get that one done. Oh, you can shift click and do that. Do you know what? Has that always been a thing? Well, that's my life changed. Anyway, 130 million. It's well worth the investment. It's going to increase the speed of our trains and also the capacity as well. So let's get them done. We'll colour them the same colour as a line, which is this sort of blue colour. And I think we'll end the episode here. And we'll end it with a little ride on one of our Alberta mainline trains. If we can just find one. Perhaps we'll go for... Let's go for this one here. So let's just get into position. First thing we want to do is pause the date progression so we don't have any new unlocks. Take a moment to appreciate the beauty of this train and it's blue livery with its shiny new all-american gold sand carriages and then we shall hop on board there we go let's get into a nice comfortable position here perhaps just oh don't want to be touching the uh, the live lines there we'll just sit up on the roof and we'll start on our way so thank you very much as always for taking the time to watch and hopefully enjoy the episode all that remains for me to say now, ladies and gentlemen, is as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.